Ron, shall I give you a hand over the rest of your things? No, you're all right, Bane. There's just a few bits and pieces now. Simbel and his lady are renting furnished. Well, it's just as well. There's not a great deal of room in here. Still, nice to have a bit of company. Yeah. Let's hope we manage to get on a little bit better than we did at my place, eh? I'm sure <laughs> we will. Aye, aye. Didn't take him long to get a new model, did it, eh? I wonder if she knows what's gone on in that family. Hey, for all we know, that lady solicitor could be his little sister. Really? Well, she's a bit too long and a two to be his daughter, didn't she? <laughs> All right, Mick. We were just saying, uh, didn't take Ollie long to get shacked up with that lady solicitor of yours, eh? Does that mean the neighbours have got something else to gossip about other than me? Do you know anything about her? She married, single, divorced, or what, you know? Well, look, I'll be seeing her later if you'd like to give me a list. I assumed you were going to be staying there all day. I was tired. Yeah, well, I've been waiting for you to lie in my shirt. Well, you might as well do it now you're awake. Chris, about last night, I want to talk about it. Oh, Rachel, I haven't got time for talk. Well, you just ain't the shirt. Hurry up, I want to get my stuff out. He just wants to get him first to bag the best bedroom. Hey, there'll be no bagging rooms. You're having the little one at the front and the lads are having the one at the back. I'm sick of having a little room. I've got loads more stuff than that. Well, let's face it, Mel. Anywhere's got to be better than that bed and breakfast we were stuck in. It's all right, sis. When I join the army, you can bin the fire bobby in the little one. Oh, yeah. Well, you should have your own place at your age anyway. Then we wouldn't have to do all your washing and ironing. There's no less squabbling. We haven't even got through the front door yet. All right, and welcome to Shea Dixon. Now, the lucky man's read the meter, I've told Telecom about the Come phone, ahead, Mel. the milk's been paid up to date, and your end food's on the kitchen table. Would you like me to...? Away, oh, Mum, it's dead, Titchy. Yeah, well, if you don't pack your things carefully, there'll be plenty of space then. Hey, listen, if these two are going to be sharing, we'll have to move that double bed from the back room. Well, they can put their own beds in then. Yeah, no problem. Unless you want to share with your big bro. Get off, will ya? Well, what do you think? Well, it's a bit doggy, isn't it? Eh? Hey? Well, the furniture is a bit tatty. Well, yeah, I mean, I know it's not top notch, like, but well, at least we've got a proper roof over our heads. Anyway, I'm going out. Hang on, I thought you were supposed to be helping. Well, I've loaded up the van, like you said. So, um, Mum, can I have that money that you said? What money? Well, my mum said if I helped out, she'd give me a few quid. But the job's only half done. We can manage. Let him spend a bit of time on his own. Yeah. So where are you going? Well, it's all right. I'm not going far. Where are you going? Days Boot Barracks, if it's all right with you. I'm going to um, speak to the soldiers and that. You know, they're on guard. Poor Squaddies must be sick of the sight of him. As long as you stay out of trouble. I'm not going to get into any trouble, am I? Don't want to mess up my interview. Time on. You're mad letting him go like that. You never know what he's going to get up to. Don't be hard on him. He's been a good lad since he went to that army recruitment place. Well, you've got to give him that, Ben. Yeah. Well, it wouldn't surprise me if it doesn't last. Won't be long before his holo starts to slip.
Morning, Miss Simpson. Morning. Morning. <laughs> All right, Joe. He's just walked out of your house with a handful of money. I was just going to say that. Did you forget to shut your front door? Hey? Oh, no, no, no. Don't worry. No, uh, him and his family have rented my place. That's from today. What? Um, he's a right scally. Don't you know that boy's reputation? Well, well I... my dad knows him from the youth club. Said he was the worst one there. I mean, Mum can't stand him either. Yeah, but... Couldn't you have consulted us? You could rent that place to anyone, and you let it to the family with a one-man crime wave? I don't believe it. <sighs> Mum will go mad. Oh, come on. The lad's not that bad. Surely. Well, if your house is flattened by a lorry or burnt to the ground again, don't say you weren't warned. Kill him. Just found my Callum. What for? Well, to ask him not to be so greasy. I tried to get him to drop the money to 300 a week, but he wouldn't even listen. He was dead snotty. You shouldn't rile these people, you know, Jack. I didn't. I just told him that we couldn't manage £750 a week. It's too much. I wanted to get some disco lights installed and a replacement sound system, but I can't. I'm just working to pay that creep. Well, did you tell him that? Yeah. But he just said, tough, we've signed the contract. How can we carry on like this, eh? I want about me poor dad. He's had to give up his home and everything to pay them parasites. I've worked hard to get this place and I feel like he's sucking the blood out of me. Actually, uh, I must have told you about that, Jack. What? Well, I've lost my home as well, haven't I? Yeah. So I was just wondering if I could move in with you and Katie for a bit. Oh, no oh, way. Oh, come on, Jack. No chance. It's too small. Well, if I was in your position, I'd let you move in for a couple of weeks. Oh, yeah. And anyway, I know you. Give you the week, you'd be there for months. Oh, thanks a lot. I'll do the same for you one day. Well, where are you going? I'm going to have to find myself a place to live, aren't I? I'm going for a paper. Yeah, but what about the bar? Well, Christian and them will be in soon, won't they? Well, OK, but don't take forever. If I've got to find £750 a week to pay that Callum creep, I can't be losing money by hoping on lease. No, don't. Don't you be telling me what to do. I mean, wait a minute, please. I just want you to talk to me. Can you see what's happening to us? Yeah, I can see you're letting me down all the time. No. Chris, you've got to stop treating me like this. Everything I do or say, you twist around and make it look as though it's my fault. You're like my dad was with my mum and you're like your mum is with you. Rachel, what are you talking about? I know what my mum went through with my dad. I don't want our marriage to be like that. You've just got to talk to me. Rachel, what are you going on about? If we don't do something soon, we're going to end up like them. You've got to stop it, Chris. Listen, it's not me that's going to stop anything. It's you that needs to start behaving properly. Why do you blame me for everything? I've tried so hard to make this work. <laughs> oh, yeah. But I feel as though I'm being punished all the time. Anything I've done to you is for your own good. Oh, like last night? Was that for my own good? I didn't want to do it and you tried to force me. What's that supposed to mean? You're acting like my dad, Chris, and I don't want that. I don't want to be married to some sort of rapist. Don't you dare call me that. I didn't mean it like that. The only thing wrong with this marriage is you. I haven't caused any trouble. You have. I haven't. Why did you get touched up by the pervert? Why did you go to bed with your own dad? Cos you're a scrubber. You're a slag. I married a dirty slag. And it is all your fault. Get them in the wash, you scrubber. Jesus, I will, yeah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God, what am I doing? 
Can you manage on your own for an I need to go and get changed before I go to my solicitor. Yeah, I'll be fine, Mick. Um, you don't mind covering for Elaine's hours, do you? Oh, I'll be glad of the money. Cheers. Have, I, have you heard anything from me yet? No, nothing. I'd better get off for Sandy's. See ya. All right, Mick. What's wrong with him? Don't I exist or something? I don't think he's feeling very talkative at the moment. By the way, we're not open yet. Yeah, I know, erm. Um, I just wanted to have a word. Oh, I? Yeah. Um, I don't know if you know, but me and our family can't afford to live in the house anymore, so, well, he's rented it to Sinbad, and that's left me in a bit of a mess. I'm homeless. Oh. And, well, I was just wondering, um, what well, do you think your mum and dad let me keep in the extension for a couple of days? What do you think? Yeah, I know, but I'm desperate, Linus. We'd have to be more than desperate to let you stay in ours, Mike. Excuse me. Rachel, I wanted that left open. Rachel, come on, you know I don't like jokes like this. No, you're not coming out. You stop messing. I'm not messing. Rachel, stop messing. <laughs> ah, you stupid cow. <laughs> You can't possibly stay here. It's far too small and we've only got two bedrooms. Look, have you asked our Jacqueline if you can bunk in with her and Katie? I've already asked her. She won't have me. You know what she's like. I've even asked Lindsay and she knocked me back. Oh, now, there's a surprise. Michael, you've got to get your own place, son. At your age, you should be well set up by now, managing on your own. Well, I'm not. Hey, can I come and share with me, Dad? Hey, hang on a minute, Michael. Well, it's entirely a matter for your father, but quite honestly... No! I... Way. Oh, go on, Dad. Look, I didn't ask to be thrown out of my own home. Look, do you want to see me on the end of the street selling the big issue? I'm sorry, Michael, but I can't have you here. Well, thanks for your consideration. Well, haven't you got any mates you can move in Forget with? Forget it, Dad. Don't worry about me. Please? Come on, let me out. I'm going to be late for work. Come on, babe. Undo the door. Look, I'm sorry I said what I did. I was out of order. Well out of order. I realise that now. Look, maybe we should talk, not like you said. I don't want to talk. I want to punish you. Oh, you're out there. Look, come on, Rach. I know you want to talk. Open the door. I'll ring in work and tell them I'm sick. Then we can spend the whole day together. No, he's staying in there. Don't be soft, Rachel. I mean, what good's it going to do? I need to go to the toilet. Are we in the sink? I don't mean that. Can't I even go to the toilet? I hope you've got to feed me. No toilet, no food. This is getting so stupid, Rachel. I can last in here for ages, you know. I've got all the water I need. I can do it in the sink. Rachel, can you hear that? That's all that I need to survive in here for as long as it takes. Yeah, very clever, Rach. Not clever enough, though. Rachel, can you hear me? Rachel, can you hear? You took off your water tank. That'll do, mate. Call, Tug. 
Bill Ben's just getting the last of the stuff off the van. Have you got any washing you want doing? All I want is a drink and a sit down. Hey, listen, I've been thinking. You know the money he's charging us for this place? Well, it's mm. not on. Us having to put up with all this tatty furniture. Oh, it's all right. Who is it? Well, the stuff I've got in storage is ten times better than this lot. I mean, where did he get it from? Well, um, well, I sorted him up with some stuff when he had the fire, you know. You mean all this stuff is from your shop? Um, well, sort of, yeah. Oh, well, that does it then. I'm not living with stuff from a junk shop. Hey, hang on, it's not a junk shop. Call it what you like, but I want shut of a lot of it, and that includes this washing machine. I've got a brand new one sitting in storage. Didn't know me mum was a snob, did you? Mm. I'm particular, that's all. So I want shut of this lot, and I want my stuff in. Oh, I love. And I want it doing today. All right. So, Jack and I? <laughs> well, it'll be all right after I polish them. So, have you got any polish, Mum? Hey, never mind polishing your boots. I've got work for you to do. Yeah, come on, after double, quick march. Do you like them? Very nice, love. Yeah, come on, you're not skiving the savvy. Upstairs now. Come on. On your bill. Hiya. Hiya. Hi, stranger. What are you doing there? I just came to tell you that Christian isn't very well. He won't be coming in today. Oh, hey, what's wrong with him? I don't know. He's He's got a temperature and he's just not right. Well, do you think he'll be okay for tomorrow? Um, I don't know, but I'll let you know in plenty of time. Is that all right? Okay, thanks. It's just that we're mad busy. Listen, while you're here, do you fancy a coffee? Or have you got to rush back to your husband? Um, it's probably where I left him when I get back, so yeah, yeah, I'd love a coffee. Okay. We don't see enough of you these days. Changing your story at this stage is not at all helpful. Well, I realise that, but, well, um, I just want to tell the truth now Elaine's gone. Well, why did you lie before? I wanted to help Elaine. I thought it would be better if I said we did it together. We had to back each other up when it came to court. Do you realise how damaging this could be? How do you mean? <laughs> How's it going to look in court when the jury hear that you've retracted your statement to the police? Yeah, but will it come to court? Wasn't there a chance the CPS might drop the case? There was, but not now. Not now that one of the defendants has broken the conditions of bail by running away. Did you change your story because you think you'll get away with it now that Elaine's gone? No. Are you sure? Yeah. I just want to tell the truth. And how do I know that this story is the truth? It is. You realise you're going to have to make a new statement to the police, don't you? If that's what it takes, then yeah. And are you going to stick to this new story? I mean, think about it. Are you going to stick to this story right the way through to the Crown Court? Yeah. Right. Well, you better tell me what really happened then. Mrs. Charlton was dead when you returned to the bedroom? Yeah. And your wife was holding the pillow? Yeah. And you had no part in the killing? No. But Elaine admitted to you what she'd done? Yeah. 
And you've changed your story because you no longer feel the need to protect Elaine now she's absconded. Yeah. Right. Well, we'll have to arrange a meeting with your barrister, and he'll go through it all again with you. Again? Of course. You've changed your story. We need to know if he believes you. Otherwise, he might decline to take the brief. That's the truth. Yes. Well, let's see what Mr. Harris thinks. Have you made any attempt to find your wife? No. Don't. If she comes back, she could cause us trouble. So don't yield to any temptation to get in touch. I'm not interested. As far as I'm concerned, we're finished. I see. Right, we'll need to arrange for you to make your statement. Do you have any worries about that? No. And are you going to stick to this new version? Or are you going to change your mind again? No, I won't change my mind. Even if your wife returns to answer her bail? No. Excuse me, can I take these, please? There you go, Mac. Oh, cheers, Rachel. Nice one. Just like old times, eh? Uh, what do you think you're doing? Just open it a bit. You don't have to do that, you know. Yeah, well, I thought with Christine being ill and that, we have been busy, haven't you? Oh, I wish everyone was like you. You can have your job back any time, you know. Oh, I don't know about that. Oh, don't you miss it? Just a bit, yeah. I don't think it does you any good being stuck in that flat all day, hardly getting out at all. Yeah, well, I've got Christian to look after, Anton. I can't do it properly than working. Right, I'd better get back. Right, well, thanks for helping anyway. All right, Jack. See ya. See ya. <sighs> she shouldn't have got stuck with him, you know. I told her that before she got hitched. Did you see the way she lit up when she was sitting in here? She shouldn't have been like that if he was around. She was under the thumb. It's a shame, isn't it? He has to be ill before she can have a little bit of time to herself. These are only bed sits and I can't even afford one. What am I gonna do, Jack? I've got nowhere to stay tonight. Yeah, well, don't even think about asking me again, cos you're not on. Oh, come on, Jack. Just one night. I'm desperate. I'm sorry, but it's not my problem. You'll just have to find somewhere else. Rachel? Rach, Rach, come on, let her down. Please, Rach, you let me out. No! Rach, I'm freezing cold. I need something to drink. I need something to eat. Please, Rach. Look, I'll do anything you want if you let me out. Oh, Rach. You can't do this to me. All I did was lose me temper. Look, I'm so sorry, Rach. I'm sorry. I'll make it up to you, honestly, babe. Open the door. on for sex, sleaze and the odd alien abduction behind the scenes of Britain's most notorious newspaper, The Sport in Cutting Edge.
us some fry up here, mate. Do you want some? Oh, yes. Yeah, that'd be marvellous, thanks. Smells delicious. Ron, you spare a minute? I'm cooking here, Bing. No, 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 come and have a look at this. What is it? What do you make of that? I don't know, mate. There's only one way to find out, though, isn't there? Rachel? Me, please. I can't go on anymore, Rachel. Can you hear me? I'm gonna die. Rachel, talk to me, please. I can't go on. I mean it. Rachel, open this bloody door or I swear I'm gonna kill you. Let me out. <laughs> Anyone in there? Be careful, Ron. Could be one of these new age traveller types. Hello? Hello? Anybody there? What's going on? Michael! You could have stopped me flaming off there! I'm trying to get some kip here. What are you playing at? You'd be more pertinent to ask what you're playing at, camping out in my back garden. I'm homeless. My own father's throwing me out, remember? I'm sorry, Michael. That's not good enough. How can't you pitching a tent on my back lawn? Why not? You did it when you left ours and the girls were still here. I may well have done, but ours happened to be my property. You'll catch your death sleeping out at this time of the year. So where else am I supposed to go, eh? The doorstep of Marks and Spencer's. Dad, I've got no choice. You won't let me stay here and Jackie won't let me stay in the flat. Why haven't you looked in the classified ads? <sighs> well, there's nothing doing. Nothing for the £100 a week barman, anyway. Yeah, well, you're going to have to look harder, aren't you? Well, I can manage it, yeah. No, I'm afraid you can't. Why not, Bing? It's only a poxy bit of grass, isn't it? What arm am I doing? Well, it's... it's insanitary for a start. I'm not having you dig a latrine pit in my garden. Well, then let me use your bug. No. No, Michael, that's not on. Oh, come on, Bing. It's only till I get sorted. Yeah, I'll tell you what. A fiver a week for the use of your bug in your kitchen and I'll keep out here, all right? I'm really not happy about this at all. Well, you've got me dad to thank for that, haven't you? Maybe just for a couple of weeks, eh, Bing? What do you think? Is that bacon I can smell? Yeah, you hungry? Yeah, too right. They are, Bing. There's your first week's rent. Uh, uh, Michael, just a minute. Ron? going into work today? Well, perhaps later. I thought I might go into town. All right. But do you need me to come in? No, no, no. We can manage. You do what you like. Yes, I will. I'll probably come in later, OK? Mm, OK. What's Mr Crosswick got a tent in his back garden for? A tent? Surely Ron hasn't been evicted already. I don't know what this neighbour is coming to. Do you know, if I were you, Mr Farnham, I'd put a stronger lock on that shed of yours, especially now you've got that skinhead old lady living next door. Why, has someone been tampering with it? Not yet, but I wouldn't trust that lot an inch. Do you know, he's a wicked little so-and-so, that ad. Typical Ron Dixon, you know. Renting out the house to a dysfunctional family. As Ollie says, the neighbour should have been consulted. Oh, don't be so stuffy, Max. He's only a boy. A juvenile delinquent who only burgled the Simpsons and stole the computer, if you remember. I heard he did Mick Johnson's place while they were in real. Allegedly. And he has some extremely unsavoury friends. Just ask David. 
Another thing I know, a little dicky bird told me that that old lady Ashka was behind the lorry crashed into their house. It wouldn't surprise me. Honestly, Max, haven't you heard of Live and Let Live? Let them prove themselves first, right? I'm off. <laughs> I can't see them doing that. I reckon poor Sinbad's got himself itched up to more than he can cope with. Are you all right, Mum? Yes. Yes, I'm fine. Are you sure? Yes. I'm all right. It's just that... Oh, I don't know. Sometimes I'm glad when Max goes out the door. You two haven't fallen out, have you? No. No, no, nothing like that. I just keep trying to be positive and cheerful all the time, and underneath... I feel like I'm falling apart. Every minute of every day, I think about Matthew and Emily. Oh, I love. Max doesn't feel the same way. I know he doesn't. He's coping. And I'm not. I'll talk to him. It's no good play acting about everything being all right if you're feeling like this underneath. We've talked and talked ever since the accident. I'm not sure he can take much more. If he's half the man, I think he is. He'll listen. Hi, Mick. All right, sir. Listen, can you do us a favour? I've got a couple of fridges coming about two o'clock. Fellas dropping them off for me. Could you open the shop and let them in for us? Oh, I'm sorry, mate. I'm off myself soon. I mean, uh, I've got to see my barrister. So if you'll swallow the new version of my story. Oh, what did the solicitor say? <sighs> Gave me a right grill. But you didn't believe it. I ain't lying, you know, sir. Yeah, I don't know, mate. But if I can get you off. Hello. Hello, Hi. Jimmy. Hey, uh, maybe Jimmy can sort you out. Well, listen, Jim. Do us a favour. I need someone to open the shop. I've got two fridges coming about two o'clock. Just let the fella in. Oh, I'd love to, mate, but uh, well, I'm in college, aren't I? Ask our Lindsay, she's covering for me. All right. Great. See you later, sir. All right, Jimmy. Yeah. Oh, me. Let us know how you get on, won't you? Right. Where's he off to? He's going to see his barrister. Well, let's hope his name's Paddy Mason, because he's going to need someone like that to get him off with this one. Yeah, well, we'll just have to wait and see, won't we? Oh, Sinbad, use the old grey matter, will you? Him and Elaine have been jointly charged, and she's done one. Even 12 dickheads and two can suss that one out. Guilty. I'm telling you, come Christmas, poor old me, he'll be doing life. Well, not necessarily. I'm telling you. Oh, look, Jimmy, who knows what's going to happen, eh? I mean, you might get off with it all together, and if she's not here, who's to say any difference? Oh, that's his game, is it? <sighs> Push it on to her? What happened to Honour Among Thieves? Now, I didn't mean to say it was like that. That's what he's doing now, isn't it? Well, nice one. Just wait till the fellas in wigs get started on him. They'll put the boot in and get the truth out of him soon enough. And what if Elaine comes back? Hey, he'll be right in it then. Yeah, well, you didn't hear it from me, all right. You just keep it to yourself, Jimmy. He needs all the help you can get and support and everything from his mates. Oh, there you are. I was going to send in a search party. Sorry. Too sure all Mike, who spends his time skiving in the toilets. Hey, don't be accusing me of bunking off whenever he started. Are you sure about working here when Christian needs his brow up and all anything? Oh, I'll be fine. Well, I'm glad I'm not at home today. Did you hear how loud he was playing that stereo? Reminds him that he can get evicted for being rowdy, and he does live next door to his landlady. Hi, Jack. All right, Rach. Yeah, yeah. Hiya, hiya. I'm looking for Christian. Oh, he's off sick, but his devoted wife has taken over his shifts for him. How about that, eh? Hey, I'm impressed. Hey, you'll be able to fiddle a few more quid for the housekeeping, won't you? What did you want, Chris, for? Well, I'm looking for someone to open the shop for me about two o'clock, cos I'm going out and I've got a bloke delivering. Well, I don't mind doing it. That's if you don't mind, Jack. No, oh, that's fine. I'm just glad to have you here. Oh, nice one. There you go. And it's good to see you out and about. You spent too much time up there, you know. I've missed that smile. <laughs> see you later. See ya. Settling in all right? Yeah, just trying to get organised. Oh, you should have that fellow of yours doing that. He's the past master. No chance of that. A word of advice for you, love, about this little neighbourhood. Oh, yeah? There's one or two people who aren't very happy about that lad of yours coming to live here. So you won't be doing yourself any favours as he starts acting the goat. Oh, which son would we be talking about exactly? The one who's got a good job in the fire service, son? Yeah, that skinhead. I know all about him. His name's Timothy, and I suppose you've been filling everyone in on him, haven't you? 
Oh, they already know, love. That's why I'm warning you. You better keep your eye on him in future. Well, there's no need. He's on the straight and narrow now. And all he needs is for people to give him a chance. But what he doesn't need is a jangling old charwoman spreading all kinds of lies about him. I'm no charwoman. You don't even live round here. So don't come telling me what to do with my son. You live with a gang of scallies and deadbeats on the worst estate in Manor Park. There's nothing wrong with Patterdale Avenue. So why don't you get back there then? And then sort your own neighbours out instead of coming round here lecturing me about my son, who's never done you any harm. Well, if you can't take a bit of friendly advice, stick your advice. I'll take care of my own son, thank you very much. And I don't need the likes of you coming round here telling me my business. Come on, All right, love. Is your Tim ready to go, yeah? Yeah, he's just getting changed. What's wrong? No, no more ice. Come on, is it your Tim? No, it's not him. It's that big gob, Julia Brogan. Julia? Well, what's up with her? Well, she told me to keep our Tim under control. And she said the neighbours are going to be watching him. Oh, don't take any notice of her. I know, but she's right, isn't she? I mean, our Tim's got a terrible reputation. And you can't blame people for being worried about him. Look, we'll be keeping an eye on him. Do you know what? I really look forward to living round here. Mm -hmm. But it's not the same when the neighbours have got a downer on us. Hey, listen. The way your Tim's carrying on, no one will be able to say anything about us, OK? So don't lose any sleep over it, all right? So they look all right then, or what? Ah, oh, very smart, love. Are you sure about them boots? Yeah. Yeah, I'll have my boots. Well, you're the expert. Oh. Good luck, son. Thanks. See you later. Um, Tim, do your best for your mum, OK? All right, Bing, I get the message. Look, I've got to go to work. But first, I want to make this perfectly clear, and you are my witness, Ron. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just listen, please, Michael. You are allowed access to the bathroom and the kitchen only between the hours of 8 and 9 a.m. in the morning and 6 and 8 in the evening. Is that understood? Yeah. Otherwise, you're in the tent, and I mean it, Michael. This house is far too small for three of us, and if you don't keep the arrangements, I may have to review your father's tenancy. Don't worry, Bing. He'll keep the arrangement. What's that tent doing on your grass, Dave? Michael is staying there temporarily. In a tent? This time of the year? Well, I've got no choice, Julia. I'm homeless, and Bing won't let me stop in here. I'm not surprised. Anyway, I don't want you mucking up all my hard work. I keep this place like a new pin, don't I, Dave? Indeed you do, Julia. And if you want any washing done, Ron Dixon, you better let me know. Oh, that's very nice of you, Julia. Thanks a lot, love. That'd be five pounds a week. You what? I won't touch it until you're paid up. Can you do mine, Julia? <sighs> you can go and whistle. Do you think I'm crawling round a tent on my hands and knees running after you? Oh, come on, Julia, please. What do you think I am? Some sort of job, woman. You'll have to make your own arrangements. Well, you don't mind if you use your washer, do you, Dave? Actually, I... Nice one. I'll just go and get a bath. Jackie, I forgot to tell you. Yeah, I was asking about Finnegan before. I think he's a little bit worried. Oh, I'll have to nip round and see him. Listen, what's the name of that bar by the round post through the side of Manor Park Drive? Uh, Barnaby's? Yeah, that's the one. Well, he has bouncers on the door there. I'm going to have a word about the security contract, see if they know any way of getting the rates down. Yeah, good idea. Is everything all right? Jack, is it OK if I go and see the Simba's delivery? I'm better drop in and see how Christian's doing. Yeah, of course it is. I'll do a bit of overtime later to make up if you want. You're unbelievable, are you? But I haven't half missed you. <laughs> so when did the recruitment officer tell you he'd let you know? Well, he didn't say. Hey, they tell you me all their master gave me a top reference. Oh, go away. Yeah, he said I was dead good at Colin Andy when we went rock climbing. Oh, nice one. Hey, and Sergeant Griffin mentioned in the shine on my boots. You're well in then, aren't you? Listen, you go report to your mum. I just want a quick word with Mick, all right? All right, sir. All right, but he's out to go with the barrister. I don't know, mate. Well, you must have some, some idea. Well, he's not giving anything away. I tell you what, he had a right home, you know. Wanted to know every little detail. Well, did he believe you, like? Oh, I don't know, mate. 
And what if he does? What if he won't take me on? I could end up in court with no one to stand up for me. Oh, look, you've got to stay positive, haven't you? I mean, you've got your story. Now stick with it. Think about the kids, all right? Dad, what's the tempo? Hasn't that soft brother of yours told you? He's living in it. Oh, hey, why doesn't he just source himself out and get his own place? Exactly. The problem is he's getting on Bing's nerves. It might end up with the pair of us getting evicted. Yeah, well, don't you get all stressed out over it. You already look pale as it is. Yeah, I've had a couple of pains in my chest, you know. Sorry I haven't been to work, love. Oh, don't worry, Dad. You get some rest. Rest? How can I rest when we're paying most of our profits to that gangster Finnegan? Has he been back this week? Well, I phoned him and asked for a reduction to 300 a week, but he said no chance. It's extortion. Those bouncers aren't worth 20 quid a week, never mind 750. Dad, we're lucky. I've just found that Barnaby's place the other side of Manor Park Drive, and they're paying for Finnegan £1,000 a week, and I've been for the past six months. God almighty. Jackie, what if he puts ours up? What then? Will we be able to cope? Stop panicking, Dad. We'll think of something. But I'm worried sick. For both of us? Yeah, and I'm worried about what all this is doing to you. You look terrible. Jackie, you just watch out for Finnegan. Forget about me. I'll be fine. Rachel? How do you feel now? Let me out, Rach. Where have you been? It's my business. Oh, Rach, I'm so sorry. I've had enough. Please let me out. No. I can't. Not till you know what it's like to suffer. Not till you know what it's like to be kept down by someone else. Rachel, it's horrible in here. I'm freezing, Rach. I'm hungry. I haven't even got a drink. I better do it in the bath. All them weeks. Ever since we got married and I still couldn't see what was happening. Please let me out. Just keeps going round and round. My dad going for my mum and then doing what he did to me and Beth. You don't know what it's been like for me. You've kept me like a prisoner in this place, well now I've got you. You try and twist everything I do and say to me because I'm stupid. To make me do what you want. Well, it's different now. I am not putting up with what my mum did off my dad. Please, just let me out. You tried to twist my mind. Make me feel like I'm, I'm rubbish and I'm not. Because I've got friends, Christian. People who care about me and you haven't. Rachel, it won't happen again. I promise you, it won't happen again. Just let me out. No. I'm not having it anymore, Chris. I mean, what if we'd have had kids? You'd have taken it out on them, wouldn't you? You'd have hit them and then done what my dad did to me. <sighs> Rachel, I wouldn't have done that. I don't know why me and Beth tried to poison my dad. Well, she stabbed him to death in our kitchen. I was going to stab you yesterday, but I didn't. I still want to kill you, though. Oh, Rachel, no, please. Maybe I will kill you. Maybe I'll just let you die in there. Please, no, Rachel. Right. Well, I'm going to go out again now. Oh, no, Rach, please, don't leave me! Now you know what it's like to be frightened, Chris. To be really scared of someone you know. Rach, don't go! Rachel! Hi. Are you home a bit early? Yeah, well, it was dead all evening, so I thought I'd leave them to it. It's probably the lull before the pre-Christmas party season. Mm. Uh, do you want a coffee? I've just made one. Oh, yeah, please. Yeah. So, do you think going to work, then? Uh, no, I went to Manchester, actually. What's this? I, I went to an agency. I got it there. What sort of agency? A uh, sort of um, surrogacy agency type of thing. What for? What do you think? We've been through all this and we got nowhere. Can't we try again? Hey. Listen, 
some late. You can get off now. I'll just finish clearing these glasses. No, go on. You can get off. You've done more than enough as it is. Listen, Jack, I know this might sound a bit funny, but do you mind if I stay at yours for a couple of nights? Why? It's a bit embarrassing, really. What is it, Rach? Well, I forgot to tell you that Chris has gone staying at his mum's tonight. He thinks he might have chicken pox. He don't want me to catch it. Why didn't you say? Of course I don't mind, and Casey's still away. You don't think I'm being soft, do you? No. Why? I just feel a bit scared in the flat on my own. Go on, go and get your stuff. I'll lock up here. Thanks, Jack. But you're all in favour when we asked Lisa. It was your idea. With your sister, it was different. At least she was related. But if we go to an agency, we'll be paying for a total stranger to have a baby before us. Does it matter? It could be an advantage. No emotional ties and all that. No, no, I, I don't like it. I, it sounds... It seems sleazy to me. Max, these people are professionals. It's cold. Clinical, I mean, could you have a baby for someone else? At least I'd know what the woman was going through. Oh, please, Max. I've made an appointment for tomorrow. Without even discussing it with me first. Well, I, I keep reading in the papers that the government are thinking of changing the laws. If we don't do it now, we might never get another chance. Why do you think they're considering changing the laws? Because there are problems with surrogacy. I mean, haven't you read about that in the papers? But I have to do something, Max! I keep wandering around, pretending I've come to terms with the fact that I can't have children, but I haven't. It, it's eating me up inside. Oh, please, Max, please come to the appointment with me. If you love me, you'll do that for me. Surely I need your support. I want to have another child more than anything in the world. Please come and hear what they have to say. Don't dismiss it out of hand without hearing all the facts. Please. Oh, well, I'll, I'll go to the appointment, but I, I don't want to go rushing into anything right now, OK? <laughs> Rachel? Rachel, are you there? Come on, please let me out. Next on 4, Gabby Roslin's back with the arguments, the disappointments, oh, and the good times of real people taking real holidays. Look at this. I specifically stated that he was to sleep in the tent. Right, come on. Get up, you. Get up. Get up and get this mess cleared up. You never even tried to sleep in that tent, did you? I must have dozed off watching that film. Oh, so you climbed into your sleeping bag when you were unconscious, did you? Yeah, and how come the telly's not still on? Yeah, well, don't believe me, then. You'll find a rubbish bag under the sink. 
Yeah. And when you've finished with that, you can get yourself back out to that... Ron? Ron? You all right? Yeah. Yeah, just, uh, Just need a shot of this. Oh. It's just a pain. <laughs> just a pain. <sighs> Must have got up too quick. Look, Max, I know Lisa would have been ideal, but she turned us down. At least with an agency, we'd have some sort of control. Like what? Well, we could say what background the mother should be from, well, how she should look. She'd still be a total stranger. Whether it's Lisa or a stranger doesn't matter to me anymore. I wish you could understand how I feel. Then tell me, how do you feel? Why this obsession with surrogacy? It isn't an obsession. Why, well, it's becoming one. I'm doing this for us. Do you want to spend the next 40 odd years of your life with an emotional wreck? If we could just. I don't know. It... The thought of us having a baby it would change everything. Look, I'll go and I'll listen to what they say, but no promises. All right? See you later. Did you sleep all right in Casey's bed? Yeah, great. Listen, you can give Christy a ring for me if you like. Um, no, no, it don't matter. Oh, go on. I don't mind. Um, no, I've got to go next door and get changed anyway. You don't mind if I work in the bar again, do you? Again? Well, I don't want to be in the flat on my own. You sure you don't want me to come round with it in case there's a bogey, man? <laughs> no, I'll be fine. I won't be in there long anyway. Rachel, everything all right? Yeah, why? Well, I was just thinking before. Well, it just seems a bit weird that Christian's gone to stay at his mum's. I've told you he doesn't want me to catch chicken pox. Yeah, but I thought you'd already had it. Do you remember when our Josh was covered in all them spots and you said you were all right playing with him? Did I? Don't think I've had it. Thought I'd had German measles. Do you have to wear a wig? No, it's only judges and barristers who get to wear wigs. <laughs> and not in Runcorn Magistrates Court. Sheree Blair wears a wig. Well, she's a judge and a barrister. I think you look better in a wig than she does. <laughs> I'll tell her you said that if she ever comes to run for man. Hi. Hi. Sorry, got a dash. Got phone calls to make and then off to Cheshire. I might be back a bit early tonight, though, OK? Yeah, OK. Bye. Bye, Dan. See you later. Well, you two seem to be getting on well now. She's all right. Um, Dan. Uh... I've been thinking, and, well, how would you feel if I asked Eleanor to stay here on a more, uh, well, on a more permanent basis? As your common-law wife, you mean? That's a horrible expression. You sound like a solicitor. Have you asked her to move in? Well, I wanted to check with you first. It didn't exactly go down well the last time she started staying here. I was younger then. Ask her. I don't mind. You're absolutely sure? I was a bit upset when you and Mum first split up. But now you both found someone else. I just want you both to be happy. Oh, thank you. So when are you going to ask her, then? Why are you so interested? Well, if you want to wine her and dine her tonight, I don't mind. I'll stay out the way, instead of being Mr Goosegog. This wouldn't involve going on the rampage with the young O'Leary, would it? No, no way. You don't have to worry about saying that I can handle him. Anyway, he's a reformed character since he applied to join the army. God help the army. So, I do a disappearing act tonight, then? Well, that'd be nice. Christian? Christian? Rachel. Are you all right? Rachel. Rachel, you've got to let me out. I need a drink, Rachel, I'm dying. I can't. Let me out! I swear I'm going to get out of here and I'm going to kill you! I'm going to kill you for what you've done to me! I'm not going to stop! 
I'm gonna smash this door down and I'm gonna murder you! You mean he's left her? Well, she said he's gone to his mum's, but she stayed in ours last night. That's all right for some, minute. You've got a tent, haven't you? I've just got this feeling that something's not right with Rachel at all. All right, Dad. Hey, son. Hiya, Dad. What are you doing here? I thought you had a check-up today. Yeah, it's uh, later on. Is Rachel back working here? I mean, can we afford another lot of wages? Mm, she's only covering while Christian's off sick. What we can't afford is a 7 50 for Finnegan. You what? Well, after the wages and the supplies bills I've got to pay, I'm £100 short. 103 to be exact. It was dead quiet last night. Jackie, we can't be short, love. We've got to pay him tonight. I just have to get it off the salon takings, I suppose. Well, you can't be doing that. You're going to get yourself in a right mess. Any other suggestions, Dad? Surrogacy agency? Do you know what you're letting yourself in for? Well, we're just going to talk to them. I mean, we, we haven't committed ourselves to anything yet. Well, if you take my advice, don't. You hear so many surrogacy disaster stories, and, well, hasn't Susanna had enough disappointments? I'd stay away, Max. Well, she's very determined, you know. Maybe, but I, I'm sure everybody starts off with the best intentions, make all the right promises, then bang. Emotions set in, everything goes wrong. I just wanted to be happy. I know you do, Max. But if I were you, I wouldn't even go to the appointment. Try and talk her out of it, now. Mick? All right, sir. All right, Mick, listen, um, I was talking to Jackie Corky before. Mick, uh, sorry, could I have a word? Yes? Would you like to come into my office? It's all right, you can talk about it to somebody. Oh, right. Well, I just thought you might like to know that Mr. Harris has agreed to take your case. Yeah? Yeah, his clerk just called me. I thought you'd be relieved to know. Yeah, yeah, it's great. I'd appreciate it if you keep the details of your defence confidential just up until the trial. Yeah, we won't say anything, will we, sir? No. OK, I'll be in touch. Thanks. Bye. Yeah, thanks, Eleanor. No going back now, sir. I'm committed. So she believed your new story, eh? Looks like it. Can I have a word, Jack? Yeah? Sure, what about? It's about me and Christian. He's left you, hasn't he? I knew there was something wrong with all this rubbish about chicken pox and going to his mum's. No. No, it's not that. I think I've done something really stupid, Jackie. What? You're not pregnant, are you? No. No, I'm not. The other night, I didn't want to, you know... And he tried to force me to... What? He tried to rape you? Well, has he ever done that before? No, no, he hasn't. But he's made my life a misery. You don't know what it's like being in that flat. It's like being in a prison cell. I can't move without him telling me off for something. I'm like a prisoner, Jack. I'm like his slave. It's been like that since we got married. That's why you don't see me. He tries to run my life and twist everything to make it look as though it's my fault. He says he loves me, but the way he treats me, it's not love. I don't love him at all. It's just like my mum and dad all over again. I decided to kill him, Jack. Oh, my God. I mean, I can't tell you about it properly. I tried to stab him at first and then I just couldn't and then I thought about electrocuting him in the bath. Well, is he all right? Rachel, you've got to tell me. What have you done to him? Have you hurt him? I locked him in the bathroom on Tuesday. Oh my I cut off his water and I haven't given him any food. I just wanted to teach him a lesson. I wanted to show him what it's like to be really frightened. Well, is he still in there? I went in this morning. I thought he'd be all right. He says he's dying. The place was horrible and it stinks. Rachel, why didn't you let him out? For God's sake, you could get jail for doing this. I couldn't. I, I didn't dare, Jack. You should have heard him. I was so frightened. He says he's going to kill me and I don't know what to do. <laughs> oh, 
Jeez, the smell. Shh. I'm with her. Just keep calm, eh, Chris? Listen, if we let you out, you've got to promise you won't do anything stupid, OK? Look, just let me out. Look, I'm dying. I need to get out. Do you promise? You just let me out. We'll give you food and water. You're going to be all right. My flat and get some water down. I'll get him some clothes sorted out. All right. Get up. Get up. <laughs> I'm up yet. I tell you, I'm up yet. Get him out. 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 You never deserved a girl like this. All the things you put her through. You look, she didn't starve you to death. I don't want to see him. I can't want to see him anymore. You're all right. You're okay. You never have to see him again. <laughs> I'm so impressed with how thorough they were. Mm. And the care they take to, to match someone as close to our background as they possibly can. Education, physical features, everything. Well, it's only what I would expect. Well, I didn't expect to go shopping. Mm -hmm. Go and put the kettle on. Mm. Feet are killing me. I'll take my shoes off. Oh, oh hello, Ollie. Hi, it's um, Max Brown. Oh, yes, he is. We've just got back from Manchester. Come on in. Shopping spree, I see. We thought we'd have a day out. Ollie, hi. Um, look, I'm sorry to bother you, but you know you bought a couple of cases of the Gigandas. Do you think I could borrow a bottle? Yeah, sure, yes, we've got plenty left. Special occasion? Well, I just thought I'd cook for Eleanor. She's been in court all day. Oh, I see. Well, if you'll excuse me. <laughs> you see. I don't think Susanna approves of me and Helena. Well, she did get on pretty well with Belle. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose so. Well, thanks. Um, did you manage to talk her out of the appointment? What could I do? I'd nip it in the bud, Max. You're going into a minefield. Believe me. Thanks. Do you want more? Six pints. Right. Where's Rachel? She doesn't want to see you. Oh, well, listen, I need to see you. Where is she? In a safe place where you won't find her. Look, we've got to talk. I've got to sort all this out. No chance. Listen, it's got nothing to do with you. She's my wife. A correction. Was your wife. What are you talking about? I know what you've tried to do to that girl. And now it's too late. She doesn't want to know you. But I love her. Making her sleep on the floor like a dog isn't loving someone. Trying to rape her isn't loving someone. Why, well, you did that? Well, she, listen, she's lying. He did anything he could to humiliate her. And all the time, he knew the sort of life she'd had. It's lies, all of it. She tried to kill me, can't you see? She's mad. No, I think it's you that's mad. No, look, all I've tried to do is look after that girl. She's the one who's humiliated me, locking me up like some animal. Well, if the cap fits... Just you get out of here and stay well away from Rachel. Hey, you can't talk to me like that. Oh, really? Well, while I'm at it, you're sacked. Yeah, but you can't do that. I just have. Well, that's not fair. I don't care whether it is or not. You hurt my friend, you made her suffer. Now go on, do one. You're pathetic. You're so clever! Well, believe me, you're nuts! Get out of here! And where am I supposed to go? Me flat's next door! It's my flat and you just been evicted. Now get him out of me and you take all your stuff with you! Come on, get out! Like, Mike, just get off me! Stop pushing me! I'm going! As for you, you jumped up little scrubber! Tell me, wife, I'll be in touch. Come on, get out of here. I didn't expect you back so early. Well, I phoned your office and they said you were working from home, so I thought I'd just turn up. 
So how did the case go? Well, I have just left one very happy lorry driver who gets to keep his job. Oh, well, cause for celebration then. I've got work to do. I think a coffee might be wiser. Trouble you get me into, eh? Are you really sure you don't want to see him again? No, never, Jack. I've made a really big mistake. I just feel like my mum must have felt all those years. Yeah, well, it's all over now. What if he comes back? Well, don't worry. You'll be with me and Katie for the time being. And anyway, the bounce will be here soon. If Christian dares to show his face, he'd be out on his ear. So how's the old tickle these days, huh? Oh, still the same, mate. I saw the quack today. It was usual message, you know, take it easy. What's it, Ray? Uh, another time, mate. I just want to see our Jacqueline. <sighs> Finnegan's money. I have to take it off the tail in the salon. Well, you can put it back, love. I got Simbad's rent and a few quid more. That should just about cover it. Dad, are you sure? Yeah, I'm positive. Let's face it, it's half my problem, isn't it? where they are, but early. I suppose I might as well pay them now. Or do you want to do it? No, you do it, love. I can't trust myself to keep me gob shut. Can I get you anything, Miss Dixon? No, Tar, love. Your husband's still on the pattern, Mick, is he? Yeah. Yeah, there's not many wives who do their husband's jobs like this. Still, I don't suppose you can afford to lose money when you're working to keep a roof over your head, eh? Yeah, see ya. Sharks happy now, are they? Dad, we said Finnegan wants a thousand pound next week. What? Well, he reckons his operating costs have gone up. A thousand pounds? Jackie, where are we meant to get that kind of money? That scumbag's draining the life out of us. So, have you lived with someone before? Not that I can remember. But you must have had long term relationships. Past relationships are history, Ollie. Why, we could be one day. Oh, well, now who's being pessimistic? Can't we just let it happen? Yes, but... Well, I'm interested in your past. There's not much to tell. I've had my share of boyfriends over the years, but no one who's around now. I'm married to my career. I never could understand work, Alex. <laughs> well, you're definitely not that, are you? <laughs> but it's true, I am married to my career. I worked really hard to get through university and get my first break in the legal profession. I love my work, I really do. Yes, but, well, surely there's more to life than work. All I'm saying is I'm not one for running headlong into big commitments. I've got enough already. Enough? Yeah, my work and the office. Talking of which, that's where I should be now. Catch you later. Bye. Yeah, love, I'll put yours there. Oh, thanks. He is gorgeous. God, he has not grown, hasn't he? He's a good little lad for his auntie Cass, aren't you? I love kids. Don't half miss our Tanya. Have you not heard anything from them? Two little calls, just to say they're okay. You haven't told anyone they've rang, have you? <laughs> no, and I'm not going to. You can tell me, though, can't you? Where are they? I don't know. First call was from London, and the second she wouldn't say. Cassie, you're going to have to keep it quiet, you know. We'll have the police crawling all over you, tapping your phone calls and all sorts. Yeah. You won't tell anyone, will you? No, of course I won't. Does she know what Mick's done? Mick? Why, what's he done? Oh, Cassie, maybe I shouldn't have said anything, you know. It could be confidential. What's he said? I don't trust that fella an inch. Well, you never heard this from me, all right. But I think he's changed his story. He reckons he wasn't even there when your mum was killed. Elaine did it all by herself. He is not getting away with that. Cassie, where are you going? Cassie, promise me you won't do anything stupid. Oh, Cassie! <sighs> Shall I put the news on? Mm. Yeah, watch it if you want. 
Honestly, Max, you've hardly said a word since we came in. What's wrong with you? Nothing. Is it the money the agency are charging? No. So it's just the agency? Well, all right, yes, it is. Look, I have to say this, and I, I know you won't like it, but I don't like the guy we saw, I don't like his setup, and I certainly don't want a child from a woman that they've chosen apparently at random. It's a properly organised operation, you know that. Just don't like oh, it. But I just don't want to have anything to do with it. You know, I wish I hadn't mentioned surrogacy. I can't believe I've started this nightmare. Why are you being like this? It's my feelings you're playing fast and loose with. I want a baby. You know that. And now you're suddenly blowing cold on the idea. I just don't think we should take the risk. What, what if it doesn't happen? What if we pick the wrong sort of person? I mean, anything could go wrong. These people are professionals. But I can't stand this. You, you're just playing emotional blackmail. I have to give in to every whim just in case you go off and, and take an overdose. That's an awful thing to say. Yeah, but it's the truth. I am not fathering a child by a stranger. That's it. That's my position. You think you can get away with murdering my mum, don't you? What? You disgust me. You drag our Elaine into this, and then when she gets scared and turns around and runs, you try to blame it all on her. Cassie, let's go somewhere quiet and talk about this. No, I'm having my say now. You're trying to blame my sister for the murder you did yourself. And now you're gonna frame her. But this is mad, Cassie. Don't even try to deny it. You're not gonna get away with this. I know what Arnie Lane is. I'm not going to get her to come back and listen to what her so-called husband is saying. Then we leave the truth back. You started all this trouble. I'm going to finish you. Arnie Lane's coming back. And she's going to tell the court what really happened. You hated my mum. Friday Comedy starts next on 4 with Friends, and don't forget that Rory Bremner's back for a new series later tonight at 10.30. Still talking to me then? Um, Susanna, I am sorry. I, I shouldn't have said some of the things that I did, and um, well, it was totally insensitive of me. Well, you were just telling the truth. Just as well you got everything off your chest. I, I'd hate for us to fall out over this. Um, <sighs> you're all I've got. You were the one who started to be so nasty. I know. Um, well, you know, I was frustrated over this surrogacy business, and I snapped. Um, and I shouldn't have taken it out on you. Will you forgive me? I suppose I could be tempted. <laughs> Good. So, does that mean we can kiss and make up and forget all about it? 
Isn't that the point of falling out in the first place? Anyway, back to you. Oh, just the pace now, on to see. I don't suppose you know when you're Lindsay and Peter are due back from the romantic little weekend. I'm not sure, Julian. Should be some time today. Well, if you see Peter before I do, will you tell him that someone's been trying to get hold of him at the salon? They've left a phone number. Apparently, it's very urgent. Oh, will do. And how's this little fella getting on then? Oh. He's so nice. And there's a lovely little baby then. Oh, it's a shame they can't stay like that, isn't it? Before you know it, they're in the teens, causing you all kinds of heartache and please standing at your front door. Anyway, oh. Julia, I'd love to stop and have a proper gap with you, but you'll want feeding soon. I can't be stuck around gossiping myself. That's the problem with being a career woman. It's all work and no play. <laughs> I'll see you later, love. Sure. See you, Julia. Yeah. Hiya, love. How are you? Oh, well, we've been better. I spent the weekend tracking Holly Lane down. Track her down? Yeah. I want to tell her what a wonderful husband's been saying behind her back. I should have kept her mouth shut. No, you were right to tell me. If he's going to try and frame Holly Lane, she should know. Good to come to. Well, for the start, she can come back here and tell everyone what a liar he is. Well, I thought you were the one who sent her packing in the first place. Well, yeah, but that's before I knew he was going to do the dirty on her. Well, breaking her back isn't going to change anything, is it? It's still going to be a word against Mix. She'll be in exactly the same boat, Cass. Uh, Cassie, I really could do with some help here. Just a bit lower. Yeah, that'll do. What do you think, Dad? Happy hour? Since when? Well, since today. I've got to find some way of bringing the extra money in. I can't believe Finnegan's put the money up. A thousand pounds. I've got a good mind to tell him where to go. If only it were that easy, eh? Yeah, but if we just go along with it, how long's it gonna be before he puts it up again? Maybe we should just stand our ground and tell him he's gone too far. Jackie, you don't want to start messing with the likes of Finn and Olaf. He's not the sort to take no for an answer very easily, is he? God, I wish I was 20 years younger. He wouldn't know what hit him. Dad, I've already told you. I don't want you getting wound up about all this. Wound up? What do you expect? That gangster's gonna end up taking every penny we've got. That's why I've got to find new ways of getting the profits up. Yeah, what if it doesn't work? Well, then I'll just have to think of something else. And what kind of people are you gonna attract, Jack? We could finish it with all sorts in there. Oh, happy hour. A pound a bottle. <gasps> hey, we'll tell all my friends at the over 55s club. We love this place even. how the other students have coped with all this noise. Well, you can't blame the baby. I'm not blaming anybody. It's just that I'm finding all this hard enough as it is. When does it have to be in? <sighs> Tomorrow. Well, go on. You go up and work in Lindsay's room. I did, didn't I? And you told me to come down here so you could hoover. I know I did, love, and I'm sorry, but he woke, didn't he? I'll just have to wait till he nods off again. Go on, you go off. Just wish I had a nice little room to myself, all quiet, with no interruptions. Oh, tell me about it, Jimmy. It sounds like heaven. Listen, I wouldn't mind a bit of peace and quiet, you know. All Lindsay and Kylie are going to be back from Morecambe soon. Oh, great. So they're going to want to go in there and unpack, aren't they? Oh, yes, probably. So you better make the most of it while you can, hadn't you? Yui! Oh, sorry to bother you, Jackie, love, but can you change this for the salon, please? Yeah, sure. Is it busy in there? Oh, we rushed off our feet. At least Peter should be back this afternoon, so that'll be a big help. Mm. I'm glad to see there's none of them bouncers here today. Oh, no. They only come in at a night time. Oh, well. Things are obviously going very well. If you can afford to take on all these extra staff. Oh, you may put that Richard Branson to shame if you carry on like this. Oh, are you, love? 
hope you don't mind me saying, but you're looking a bit peaky. Yeah, well, I didn't get much sleep last night. Oh, that on kiosment of yours been keeping you up all night, has it? <laughs> there you go, Julia. Oh, thanks, love. I better get straight back. Can't keep the customers waiting, can we? <laughs> Ta ra look. See ya. <sighs> Big mouth strikes again, eh? She wasn't to know. Maybe there's anything from him. No, I don't want to either. Yeah, well, I don't think he's have the nerve to show his face round here again. He better not, anyway. I think I know Christian better than anyone, and I'm sure he's not going to let me get away with this. I've humiliated him. I've made him look stupid, and he's going to hate me for that. Oh, Rach, the only reason he'll hate you is because you took control. You showed him that you weren't just some stupid little housewife who was there to take his orders. I feel terrible. If he's had any idea what you've been going through, you should have told us what was going on. It wasn't that easy, Jack. I was just plodding along, wanting everything to work, and... I don't know. I just exploded. I can't handle it anymore. Yeah, well, I think everyone around here should be told exactly what he's like, just in case he does come back. Do you mind if I take time off work? No one thinks it'll do me good to stay there for a few weeks. No, that's a good idea. I think that's the best thing you could do. My nerves were gone last night. Every little noise, I just kept thinking it might be him trying to break in or something. I know he's not going to let me get away with this. Don't think like that. He's nothing to be scared of. Any man who treats his wife or his girlfriend the way he treats a Jew are totally spineless. And if he dares to come back round here, he won't know what is. Oh, I don't know what I'd have done without you last week. Yeah, well, I'm just glad you're OK. You've had a lucky escape. Now, you get off to your mum's and stay there for as long as you want. Your job will always be here for you. Thanks, Jack. Right. Well, I'll ring you when I get there, OK? See ya. See ya. Never gonna drop off. Do you mind? I'm trying to concentrate here. Oh, excuse me. Anyway, I thought you needed a brain to concentrate. <sighs> Very funny. Do you have to do that now? I want to get this finished before I go to work. Jimmy, he could wake up any minute, couldn't he? I want to get it done before Lindsay and Kylie come back. Do you want me to get through this course or not? Of course I do, but I want to clean home as well. I'm sorry, Jimmy. I know how hard it is for you, love, but you can't expect everyone here to come to a standstill just because you've got some college work to do. Look, go downstairs and I promise I'll try not to disturb you again. I don't believe this. It's like flaming musical chairs. I want to say no to a cup of tea while you're down there. What are you doing here? That's no way to greet your customers. I can't help but notice the poster in the window. What's that all about? Well, I have to think of some way to bring in more business. You don't want to bother yourself with all that happy or nonsense. Yeah, well, I wouldn't have to if you hadn't put the money up like that. How else am I supposed to find a grand a week? You'll manage. Yeah, joke on, aren't you? Just think of all the aggro you've saved. I hate to think what would happen in here if you didn't cough up. We didn't have any aggro till you turned up. Yeah, we'll have plenty if you continue with this happy or nonsense, believe me. Why? Oh, just think about it. What's the point of spending all that money in security and then filling the place with freeloaders? Do you really want this place crawling with lagger louts, tanked up in cheap booze? No, of course I don't. But I've got to find some way of bringing in more customers. Don't get yourself so worked up. I'm only giving you advice. You've a lot to learn. What? Well, how to get rid of people like you, you mean? No, no, no. You hurt my feelings talking like that. Why don't you be a good girl and take down those posters before word gets out that this place has gone downhill? Who do you think you're talking and to? Believe me, you'll thank me for this one day. Now go on, get rid of them. Yeah, well, you can't order me around like I'm that. I'm not ordering you around, I'm simply giving you advice. It's not in either of our interests to lower the standards in here. Now, why don't you make life easy for yourself, eh? Trust me. Go on. Ch-ch. Sick when you see our tans. <laughs> Hiya, Dad. Hiya, love. Hiya, Kyle's. Come hey. here, kid. How are you? Oh. <laughs> How was Morecambe? Oh, the summer's cracking the flags. It was 90 degrees in the shade. I wish. Hiya, Hiya Morecambe. Did you have a nice time? Apart from the miserable weather. Well, I'll bet you're down for a cup of tea, aren't you? Oh, you must have read my mind. Jimmy, put the kettle on, will you? Oh, Peter, before I forget, um, Julia Brogan asked me to pass a message on to you, and she said someone's been trying to get hold of you at the salon. Did she say what it was about? No, but she said it was urgent. Oh, probably be one of me regulars wanting a blue rinse now in Julia. <laughs>
Oh, I'd better pop round there anyway. Aren't you going to have a couple first? No, I'd better get going. Is there any wonder I'm showing signs of premature age in the hours they work me? <laughs> I'll see you all. <laughs> see you all. Hey, look at your hat! <laughs> Thanks for a lovely time. I'll give you the ring when I've finished. Don't miss me too much. Hey, I think I can survive a whole afternoon without you. No, you're a cold bitch. <laughs> Kylie! Not on there! That's Grandad's way! Kylie, what have you done? Oh, way. Oh, you shouldn't go shouting at her. She wasn't to know what it was. I'm oh, sorry, Dad. We've only been back two minutes and we're already causing chaos. Oh, about it. I've got to write it out again anyway. Love, you make that tea. I'm going out. I've got to clear my head. I'm going for a walk or something. Come on, Kyle, you take your bags and go upstairs. I mean, he has been working awfully hard, you know. I mean, he's worked all through the weekends. Just as well we went away to have him have a bit of peace for the change, eh? Go on. How was it then? No, oh, it was great, Mum. Oh, I just, I can't believe how lovely Peter is. He's dead thoughtful. He treats Callie like she's his own. Oh, no, you can <laughs> tell she likes him. Getting serious then? No. Oh, well, let's just say it's really nice to go out with someone who's a good laugh. It's, it's like he's my best mate as well as everything else. So, do you think it's gonna last? I mean, does he um, light your fire or whatever it is they say? <laughs> Listen to you. Let's just say he's gorgeous as well as everything else, and that'll do for now. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? Are you on your dinner break? Uh, yes, yes. Just having a quiet spot of lunch. I was just going to pop over to your place and grab a butty, and then I spotted you coming in here. Do you mind if I join you? No, no, not at all. Oh, yeah? What can I get you? Right, I'll have a fresh orange juice, please, and uh, some garlic mushrooms with tomato and mozzarella salad, please. Garlic mushrooms? Do you think that's wise, Dave? I mean, say, the fumes over there have had enough without you stinking to I ever. Personally, I'm uh, not at all offended by the smell of garlic. Oh, well, as long as you don't mind staying single. <laughs> oh, you toasted sandwiches? How long have you been doing them? Oh, today. I'm trying out more snacky stuff. Oh, I'm glad I've come in now. I'll have, um, cheese and onion toasty on uh, white cream and a cup of coffee. Right, but you go and find a table and I'll bring it over to you when it's ready. Thank you. Oh, doesn't it make a nice change having a little business lunch together, Dave? We should do this more often. <laughs> Now, they're the kind of customers you could definitely do without. They're regulars. They live around here. You shouldn't encourage them. What do you mean, encouraging them? What's with the toasted sandwiches and all-day breakfasts? Well, what about them? Look, I've already told you. I'm prepared to try anything if it means bringing more people through the door. With toasted sandwiches and cups of tea? You really want a place full of the likes of them? Look, it's early days, but I will have this place packed every night. I guarantee you will make enough to pay for your security and have a nice, healthy profit for yourself. Oh, yeah. No, you've got to manage that. <laughs> Just wait and see. You made a good team. I intend this partnership to go on for a long, long, long time. <laughs> I might be back later. Don't go making any changes behind my back. Not without my say-so. Catch you later. Respect. So you're getting a new neighbour, lad? Soon have this tidied up for you. Linz! Oh, yeah? You're not going to believe this. Believe what? That phone call Julia said was urgent. It was Michael Makin International. Who? Remember last year when the salon won the hair shop? Yeah. Well, they were the company that sponsored it all. Oh, and what did they want you for? Well, 
They wanted to know if I wanted to go to Bali to be a hairdresser on a photo shoot for two weeks. You're joking. No, apparently someone let them down at the last minute and they were wondering whether I would back <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. I think it's doing uh, shock. So when did you go? A week Friday. All expenses paid. Just me, a photographer, a stylist, a load of supermodels on some exotic island. I can't believe it. <laughs> oh, isn't it marvellous that your fell off to Balti on a glamorous photo shoot? Julia, it's Bali, not Balti. Oh, kiss. The both of us are what tickets each other. <laughs> oh, it's all right for some, isn't it? I just don't know why they didn't ask me to be one of the models. They obviously didn't uh, know what a cracking pair of legs I thought. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you're going to be on some desert island surrounded by loads of supermodels, aren't I? No, oh, feeling a bit jealous, are we? No. Of course not. Just worried you might not come back, that's all. Of course I'll come back. I don't know, Peter. Why should you be interested in me? Some single mum who works in a chippy when you're going to be surrounded by a load of gorgeous women for a fortnight. Do you really think I'm not shallow? Oh, seriously though, Peter, this, this means you're going to miss me dress rehearsal for Sing Like a Star. Who's going to do me hair? Let's, they'll have loads of great stylists. Oh, I'm sorry I can't be there for you, but I can't miss out on a chance like this, can I? No. I know you can't, but just... Don't forget about me, that's all. Paranoid or what? How am I going to forget about you? Can you be sick of the sound of me voice? I'll be on the phone every night in my lonely little hotel room. <laughs> Unless you get sidetracked by one of these 12 models. Then... It wouldn't matter if there was 112 models. I still only advise for you. See ya. Hiya. <sighs> Feeling better? Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot clearer. Just need to get out for a bit, you know. I thought you'd be back before now. Yeah, well, I went down to the cemetery. Oh, right. Oh, Jimmy's grave's in the right state. Oh, no. Just a bit of litter, you know. A few weeds in there. Made me realise how long it is since I've been there. Hey. Well, we haven't had much time to ourselves these past few months, have we? Well, tell me about it. Hey, yeah. Hold him for a oh. sec while I check his bottle. Come on, sunshine. Hey, listen, I think I'll go back towards the end of the week. Tidy it up a bit. Take a few flowers and that, eh? Oh, that'd be nice. Give me the world a good going now, love. How do you mean? Well, put it all into perspective, you know. Here's me feeling fed up because I'm struggling with all my work. You've just reminded me why I'm doing it in the first place. Mm -hmm. To give this little sausage all the things our little Jimmy never had. And made me realise that no matter how hard this next year is going to be, well, hopefully, it's all going to be worth it in the end, isn't it, son? Mm. <laughs> I think you'll find that's highly confidential. Why? What have you got to hide? Oh, just the numbers of my mistresses. <laughs> Already got them. <laughs> what are you looking for? Well, I can't help feeling that there's somebody we've overlooked. Overlooked? To be our surrogate mum. Susanna, I thought we'd agreed to give up on the whole idea. No, Max. You were the one who decided we wouldn't go through an agency. And as it happens, I agree with you. To be honest, it does all seem rather hit and miss. But that's no reason why we should give up on the idea altogether. What are the alternatives? Well, I know Lisa didn't want to be our surrogate mum, but that doesn't mean to say there isn't somebody else out there who wouldn't be just as perfect. Like who? I don't know. That's why I'm going through your address book. But there, there must be somebody we know we can trust who'd be willing to help us. You haven't listened to a word I've said, have you? Nothing's changed, Max. I still want a baby. I want one more than ever. Yeah, I can't wait to get home and have a long bath. <laughs> I'm just going with some lucky cards. Give Jimmy a bit of peace. I was, uh, I was thinking, you know, about what you said about Ollie Lane. Oh, I hope you don't think I was being funny. No, you were right. I mean, what's the point in dragging her all the way back in now? Especially now that he's twisted everything to suit himself. Now, this just proves I was right about him all along. He's out for himself and no one else. He didn't think that about that marriage. Hiya, Jack. Hi, Ron. How are you? Oh. Could be worse, you know. <laughs> Ta-da. Oh, I'll see ya. Later. It's 
must be some kids here. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I've decided there's only one way to defend Darling Lane's name. I'm gonna stand up in court and tell the truth. That Mick Johnson murdered my mum because he wanted her out of the way. It was nothing to do with Darling Lane. He was the one who forced her into believing that what she did was right. I wanna make sure he pays for that. I come round and make the most of your happy hour. It isn't a happy hour anymore. What? <sighs> Finnegan was in before. He said he doesn't want me lower than the tone of the place. That's rich, isn't it? The only thing lower than the tone of this place is him and his cronies. He even made me take all the posters down and everything. God, I don't believe this. It was bad enough when he was just coming around here for his money. Oh, he's acting like he owns the place. I can't even make the smallest changes without his permission. How can I do that? I don't know, love. What can we do apart from make the most of the bad job? Well, what do you mean? Jack, you've got to face it, love. Finnegan isn't just going to go away. We have only choice. Dad, I can't believe you're saying that. I'm just being realistic, Jack, that's all. Yeah, well, you might be prepared to let him walk all over us, but I'm not. I can't carry on like this, Dad. I can't afford to. Don't ask me how I'm going to do it. But believe me, I won't be happy until he's out of our lives for good. Would you trust a used car salesman? Cutting edge next on 4. Witnesses the heartache and the anger of those who've experienced car trouble. how it's not in his interest for this place to fail, that things are pick up. I reckon half of this lot of gangster mates of his. Do you think? Aye, aye, speak of the devil. Obviously mates of his. See, what does I tell you? I bet you most of these are connected to him in some way. I bet you're pleased, eh? Why should I be? Well, this place. I told you things would soon pick up. All anger's on are yours, are they? Well, I recognise one or two familiar faces. How you doing? Be there in a minute. Listen, mate, I don't know who all these people are, but I'm telling you right now, we don't want this place crawling with second-rate gangsters. Gangsters? <laughs> <laughs> You've been watching too many black and white movies, Ron. Haven't you got anybody else you can go persecute? Hey, take a look around. You ought to be grateful. Grateful? Are you for real? Dad. You're all right, Bob, I'm going. I'm going to spend another second in this fella's company. <laughs> you ought to relax, man. What time are you meeting your client? 20 minutes. But I hope the traffic's not too bad. You look very nice anyway. I'm sure the judges will be very impressed. One judge, then. No wigs, no gowns. The whole thing will be very informal. When will I get to know? Know what? Well, who I'm going to spend the rest of my adolescence with. What will happen, Eleanor? Will a judge ring me up on his mobile as soon as he's decided? Or will I be the last to know, as per usual? Your mother and I will come straight back here after the court. We'll let you know what's been decided. How considerate. i better go. Bye. See you Bye. later. Bye, Dan. Bye. So my future's going to be decided by some people I've never even met. I know it seems odd, Dan, but you know why we're in this situation. We're only going through with this because we love you so much. We, 
We both of us want you to live with us. Well, the way things are now, it just seems like I've got nothing to do with it. Oh, that's not true, Dan. We just... neither of us want to back down. Why can't we sort it out ourselves? Why must my future be decided by some court? Come on. Okay. Yeah, I think so. You want it here? <laughs> oh, okay. That's it. Right. Do you know, I can't believe how quiet it is around here. Yeah, but it'll all change now that your, your Tim's moved in. Hey, leave him alone, you. There's been a change of since he started in all this army stuff. Yeah. I've never seen him so enthusiastic. Yeah, it's amazing the difference it can make once they get into shop, minute. Yeah. Wish it wasn't the army, though. I mean, what am I going to do if he just get in? Oh, well, we'll just have to worry about that when it happens, won't we? Yeah, you're right. Good job we've got you around to calm me down, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you mind? Oh. Mum, have you seen my trainees? Yeah, I've put them out back because they were stinking the house out. And where are you going? Jogging. Again? Yeah. I want to be like Rambo for that army selection programme. God, that's all we need. You're going to get bored with it in a couple of days, you know. I bet you ten I won't. Anyway, I see you go jogging. Probably cause an earthquake in China or something. Hey, don't be so cheeky. Hey, I'm fitter than you think, you know. You know all this? This is muscleless. Prove it, then. Come jogging with me. Well, I would only have got to pick, pick a fridge up. Ah, <sighs> see, just a bottler. Why don't we go with them? You're joking, aren't you? I'd have a heart attack just running the bath. Well, I think you should go with them. Why? Well, think about it. This is a perfect opportunity for you two to do some male bonding. Uh, uh, I can't think of anything I'd like more. Hiya. Hey, I was just going to pop into town. Do you fancy coming with me? Yeah, OK. What are you going for? Oh, just a couple of bits of me trip abroad, you know, suntan creams, mosquito oh, repellent. No need to rub it in. That's what you're supposed to do with that. <laughs> oh, look who it is! It's Posh Spice! Hey! Hiya, mate. Me and your mum are going to pop into town. Do you fancy coming with us? Yeah. And if you want, I'll do your hair for you again, OK? Which one do you want to be today? Sports Spice. Sporty Spice? <laughs> oh, OK, then. Go and get me a brush and I'll do it for you. I don't know how you get round it. Every time I go near her to do it, she screams. It's my amazing personality. All the women go for it. Oh, well, I hope all the models in Bali don't. Oh, listen to you. How many times have I got to tell you there's only room in my heart for one girl? Oh, yeah. And who's that? Well, it's certainly not someone who works in a chip, is it? Oh, you are evil. No, I am. <laughs> Kiss a snog. <laughs> right, then. You all set? Yeah, right. You can't come on that. That's cheating. Well, I knew you wouldn't have been able to keep up with it otherwise. Oh, yeah, just as if. Well, it's all right. Still exercise, isn't it? Your Ben won't mind me bottom on his bike, will he? Well, yeah, I suppose he would. But he will find out as long as you bring it back in one piece. Yeah. Right, come on. Let's see how fit you really are. Good luck. Come on. Get out of it, you! Get out of it, cracky, you monkey little nut! <laughs> Oh, this place is very busy. Mm. Better be careful. Jackie Dixon will be putting us out of business. This place has absolutely no effect on grants. You know we're trapped in a totally different type of clientele. <laughs> Hello, Jackie. Hi, yeah. We're just talking about how busy it is. You're obviously doing it really well. Uh, yeah. Can I get you some drink? Yes, I'll have a sparkling water. Yeah, um, same for me. Come on. She's done very well for herself, hasn't she? Mm. Oh, come on, Max. Credit where credit's due. Most people Jackie's age haven't even left university yet, and she's got all this. Obviously doing something right. Oh, hello. On a fitness drive. <laughs> What's this, Tour de France? <laughs> yes, yeah, very funny. Yeah, where are you going? I'm going to Chippy. You can't have chips for doing exercise. I'm just getting a drink. I'm thirsty. A drink? Oh, you can't be thirsty. We've only just started. I'm only going to be a minute. All right, then. We'll catch me up. Hey, I'm not really leaving outside. Take it in, will you? Daniel, what are you doing here? Are you coming into court with us? We're not going into court. What do you mean? Dan doesn't want to. He thinks, and I agree with him, that we should be able to get this sorted between ourselves. Well, what have you been saying to him? I haven't said anything. It was Dan's decision. Please, stop arguing. Oh, 
Look, I don't know why we had to come here in the first place. Well, you know why. It's because we can't come to a decision by ourselves. Surely we can arrange something between us. Anything's got to be better than going through the courts. Please, Mom. But I just don't see that we're going to be able to come to any agreement together. Well, we don't have to agree, do we? Ultimately, it's got to be Dan's decision. I just don't think it's fair to ask Dan to make a decision like that. So do you think it's fair for some judge to make a decision for me? But are you sure this is what you want? Yeah, but I don't want to make the choice right now. You don't have to. Nobody's expecting you to do that. You just take as long as you want. Well, in that case, how about spending the afternoon with me? Why? Well, because he's my son, because I'd like to spend the afternoon with him. If you don't begrudge me, you spent enough time with him lately. Please, stop arguing. Right. Well, I better go and explain what's going on. Sorry about the way things have turned out. At least it's not going to drag on much longer. As soon as you make a decision, we can just put all this arguing behind us. Come on. I thought you said you were going to burn me off. Hey, hang on, you. I need a rest. A rest? But we've only been gone about ten minutes. You've done this on purpose, haven't you? It's like trying to ride up a wall. I thought you said you were fit. Well, I am for the age. How old are you? 89. You think you're really funny, don't you? No. I know I'm dead funny. I'm getting off. Catch me up when you caught your breath, eh? You see, that's the difference between Grants and a place like this. Mm. The dishes, they look pleasant enough on the outside, but as soon as you start digging that little bit deeper, you soon realise that it's just... Is normal. everything OK? Yes. Uh, fine, thanks. What about drinks? Same again? Um, yes, why not? OK, won't be a sec. <laughs> no, no, where was I? Oh, yes, the food. Well, it certainly wouldn't take Egon Roney to figure out that this place is just a, a jumped-up fast-food joint. And I'm having an affair. Darling, are you listening to me? Mm? Oh, I I'm sorry, I was miles away. I was just thinking. Oh, what about? Young, good looking, bright. Doesn't want any children of her own, not in a relationship. Look, we've been through all this. I think I've just found the ideal person. Mm -hmm. Who? Jackie Dixon. What? There you go. Anything else? No. Um, no. Um, thank you. OK. You're telling me you're not serious. I am, Max. I am. I think she'd be perfect. since we've done anything like this. Yeah, it makes a nice change. Sorry about all that bickering with me and your dad earlier. Must have been the last thing you needed. This business about you choosing who you ought to live with, it was your decision, wasn't it? Yeah, of course it was. It's just that with you spending so much time with your dad recently, and I was worried that you might be pushed into something you didn't want to do. I just don't want my future decided by some cards. Look, I know how hard this must be for you. I just want you to know that no matter what you decide, that I will always be there for you, you know? I will always love you, no matter what. Yeah? So, how are things at home? Fine. Is Eleanor there much? <laughs> you could say that. How do you mean? She's there practically all the time now. Well, your father doesn't waste much time, does he? You can talk. How'd you get on with her? Yeah, she's nice. Mm. 
I don't see as a replacement mother, though. Well, I just want you to know that I will not be following in your father's footsteps, you know, with Patrick. I mean, he's more of a friend, really. I certainly don't intend to get into a long-term relationship at present. You don't have to say that, you know. I just want you to do whatever makes you happy. Same with Dad. Well, I'm only telling you because, you know, if you did decide to come and live with me, there wouldn't be somebody hanging around the house, getting in your way. It would be just you and me. But what about when you go away on business? Would it be just me and my own, then? Well, I don't go away that much. And if I did, you could spend time with your father or you could come with me. It would be entirely up to you. But, you know, I just want you to know that, that, that nothing will come between us. Not, not relationships, not work. That you will always be my number one priority. I don't know why you're dismissing it like this. It was only a suggestion. Why? Why? Because she's Ron Dixon's daughter, for a start. I mean, have you gone completely mad? But we decided somebody we know would be ideal. Yes, someone we know, but not our next-door neighbour's daughter. But why? Well, I can't believe we're having this conversation. I mean, it's bad enough knocking next door for a cup of sugar, but asking for someone to be our surrogate mother. But Jackie's a businesswoman. There's no reason to suppose she won't approach this as just another business opportunity. Oh, don't be so ridiculous. I saw her the other week, and she told me herself she wasn't interested in having a family of her own. She's totally dedicated to her work. But that doesn't mean to say she'll have a child for us. I'm sorry, darling, but you've got to get a grip of yourself. I know how desperately you want a family, but you've got to be realistic about things. You can't just start approaching anyone. Jackie isn't just anyone. And she fits our list of criteria almost perfectly. I, I don't see why we don't just sound her out. I am not discussing this any further. Now, I can't believe you think that she'd contemplate something like this, even for one second. She's a clampet, for heaven's sake. Jackie, another bottle of champagne when you're ready. OK? So, you seen Tony? No, he said he was going to get your buzz. Oh, no. I'll just clear these out your way. Oh, thanks, Jackie. Who's your flash friend drinking champagne at this time of day? <sighs> He's no friends of mine, believe me. in the Aussie. What? You should have seen him. He was stopping every five minutes to try and catch a breath. Felt a shame for him. He looked a show. Oh, don't be mean. At least he's taking an interest trying to help your house. Yeah, I suppose. I wish you wouldn't be so hard on him, you know. He's really trying to make an effort with you. Yeah. I suppose he's not that bad, really. Well, it's nice to hear you say it. Anyway, I'm gonna get a shower. Oh, and there he is. Look at the state of you. I need to lie down. Again. Never again. He's not better off than a nuclear base, don't you? See, he's still here then. He's been sat there all day knocking back champagne like it's water. I can't get rid of them. I suppose this place is still a novelty to him. We just have to hope that he gets bored and finds himself somewhere new. Yeah, I'm just sick of him treating it like it's his office. At least he pays for his drinks. Jackie, can I have a word? Yeah, what about? I think you should know that your toilets resemble a scene from train spotting. What? I've just walked in on two people snorting what I can only assume to be drugs. You what? I didn't even lock the door. Oh, well, are they still up there? Well, I haven't seen them come down. Right, so I think we've sorted out. Uh, get the bill, please. What were you talking to Jackie Dixon about? I've just caught two people, thank you. It's taking drugs. Oh, right. Oh, I'm proud for me that you decided to act on the this right now. Being totally outrageous. But what harm can it do? She can only say no. I am getting you out of here before you say something you might regret. Do you know what? I think I'll start off with an eight for the first couple of days and then work my way down to a four. You can never be too sure, can you? Wish I was going with you. Well, I'm gonna miss you. Oh, I'm gonna miss you too. 
You're not like any of the other fellas I've been out with. I was just saying to me mum the other day, it's like, you're my best mate more than anything. Oh, that's how you see me, is it? Mate? Oh, of course not. It's just... Well, it's different, that's all. I mean, going out with someone I can go shopping with, <laughs> who even picks me clothes out for me. It just feels well, dead comfortable, as if I don't have to make an effort. Oh, it's nice, isn't it? We've only been going out with each other a couple of weeks. Now you can't even be bothered to make an effort for me. You know what I mean. So do you think we've got a future, then? I hope so. Good. Because I want us to be more than just good mates. But we already were. Oh, it's just been so long since I've been out with anybody. And when I do finally get involved with someone, I always tend to throw myself in the feet first. Especially with someone as nice as you. I just like to make a real commitment. <laughs> so that's it, then? You're not going to do anything about it? Like I said, we can't prove anything. Yes, we can. One of our neighbours saw them with his own eyes. Just calm down. It's not as if they were fighting. Look! It might not be serious to you, but I don't want any drugs in my bar. Well, they weren't in your bar. They were in the bog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, excuse me, but we're the ones who pay your wages. Now, either you go and sort it out now, or you're not getting another penny out of this place. Just you try. A couple of people having a line in your toilet will soon be the least of your problems then. That's it. I've had just about enough for you. Dad. Who the bloody hell do you think you are, eh? I'd move them if I was you. Right, I want you and the rest of your slimy little gang out of here now. Now, come on, shift it! You'll be the one getting put out if you don't move your hands right now. You will. You won't throw out drug addicts, but you're threatening me! Come on, Dad, just let go of me. I'm not done! Oh! Bloody hell! Dad, what's wrong? It's all right, lads. Just me and Jack. Now, look what you've done. I haven't done anything. It's him that's thrown his weight around. Look, I do not want any hassle for you and your father. It's all of our interest that we have a good working relationship. The sooner you pair realise that, the better. OK? Are you all right? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> do you mind if I put these books out? No. Go ahead. Holly, are you OK? Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. You don't sound too sure. What's the matter? You're not having second thoughts about you moving in, are you? No. No, of course not. So, when are you going to tell your landlord that he needs to find himself a new tenant? Actually, I've decided to keep the flat on for the time being. Oh. Well, it's still early days for us, isn't it, Ed? I don't want to go jumping in feet first. I'd rather wait a bit and see how things go. Not that I'm envisaging any problems. I mean, if things carry on the way they've been, I'll be very happy to stay around for a long time. Ollie? Are you OK? Oh, I'm just worried about Dan. I thought he'd be back by now. Oh, I'm sure he won't be too much longer. You don't think he's feeling... unwanted, do you? Well, he seemed fine about me moving in, didn't he? Yes, I know, but I'm... I'm just afraid that maybe he felt he had no choice. <laughs> Belle will love this. You know, I dread what she's putting into his head this afternoon, trying to turn him against me. Danny knows his own mind. He knows what he wants. Yeah. That's what I'm afraid of. You know, I don't think I could cope if he chose to live with Belle. Oh, I wish you didn't have to go into work today. Put tears on me now, please. Well, just think, I'll be here to pick it up and walk it home when you knock off. You don't have to, you know. No, I don't. I want to. Well, in that case, I might even invite you in for a coffee. Oh, it's a pain you've been here, Mum and Dad's events. We never seem to get any time for just the two of us, do we? You'll probably be asleep by the time I've finished anyway. Look, Liz, you know what I was saying before about commitment to them? What about it? Well, am I getting carried away, or do you feel the same way? Well, it depends what you mean by commitment. You're not talking about marriage or anything like that, are you? Good crap, no. <laughs> well, not just yet, anyway. I was thinking more along the lines of just living together. Oh, right, yeah. Am I being a bit gay? Do you want me to pretend I never said that? No, not at all. I mean, gosh, I'd jump at the chance, but... Well, it's not that easy for me, really, is it? Well, I've got Kylie to think about, and... I just don't want to grow up with a succession of uncles. I don't think anyone could ever accuse you of that, could they? Oh, I'm not so sure. I mean, first there was Gary, and then I was engaged to Mike Dixon. And now there's you. I just... I just don't want to get used to somebody, then them disappearing like all the rest. It's not fair on air. But I've told you, I'm never going to disappear. I'm not like that. 
I can't see any reason why me and you shouldn't be together forever. So what do you reckon? You, me, and Kylie. I want us to live together. Hi, Dan. Dan? I was beginning to think you weren't coming back. Why? Well, I didn't expect you to be so late. So how was your afternoon? Fine, we just went to the park. Oh, very nice. And uh, did you two manage to have a good chat? Yeah, yeah, I've asked Mum to come round to my afternoon and I'd like you to be there as well, if that's all right. Uh, yeah, yes, of course. So, does this mean that you've made your decision? Yeah, I'll let you know tomorrow afternoon. I'll go straight upstairs, get on some work for the school play. I haven't done it yet. <laughs> you never mentioned anything about a school play. Yeah, well, you know me, full of little surprises. <sighs> So, this is it, then. Don't worry about it. Well, of course I'm going to worry about it. What else am I going to do? This time tomorrow, I could lose my son. Next on four, steaming in Borneo, sweating in the clubs of Corfu, and getting drenched in Wales. Real holidays, real people and real weather.